Okay. Here's my review of the Soundbrenner Core and Pulse. These are both really good tools that I've been using in my classroom this year, and I just want to show you a little bit about how they're compatible with each other, what you can do on the iPad uh, to get the most functionality out of them, and uh, some of the pros and cons of having them. So I just want to introduce each of the uh, items really quick. So this is the Soundbrenner Pulse. This is the uh, cheaper model. This is about 90 bucks, and I got this for my classroom with the grant that uh, we used to support some of our students who are hard of hearing really effective tool on its own or in conjunction with the Soundbrenner Core. This is the Soundbrenner Core Steel. This was the one that I was a part of the crowdfunding project for on Indiegogo. On the back you can see there's that little you know co-creator special edition. So this one is um, unique to just the crowdfunding uh, campaign. But what I want to say is whether you're doing this Soundbrenner Pulse on its own or in conjunction with other pulses and cores, they are all going to be really effective tools in your rehearsal. So a little bit about this, the um, hardware that comes with it. You've got the pulse itself is a vibrating metronome that connects via Bluetooth to your device. This is made out of a plastic uh, case. And if it drops on the floor, it's not going to um, break. It's pretty durable, especially for middle school, which is great. So if middle schoolers can handle it, I think it'll work for all ages. You've got the different bands. This one's a short band for a wrist. This one's a long band right here to go around an arm. Imagine you wanted to put it on your shoulder and slide your sleeve over it so that you can feel the pulse without having to um, you know, let everybody know, hey, I'm using this as a tool. Uh, it's discreet, which is really cool, and that's one of the reasons why I got it, so that students who need to use it can use it without making a distraction out of this tool. All right, so this is the, the pulse, really easy to put it back into its slot. Okay, so the hardware right here on the Soundbrenner Core, this one's made out of steel. I really like this one over the plastic one uh, because I've heard things about the durability of the plastic one. I think just having this uh, just feels better when I'm using it to rehearse. And uh, the extra weight to it helps, I think, with the vibration. So this one's removable from its strap. So it magnetically clicks in there. And then your default watch face right here is going to tell you the time and your battery percentage and the date. When you press the bottom big button, you're going to start cycling through all the different options. So there's your menu of apps. You got metronome. Let's see, that's tuner. You got your decibel meter, your timer, stopwatch, settings, and then it goes back to metronome. So when I click on metronome, with the big button, it pulls me into this screen. It's the same screen that you see on the Soundburner app. So there it is right there, side by side. You've got the Soundburner app mirrors what I'm doing here. Okay, so I've already got them paired. I will put another video up on how to connect everything and pair each device. But right now, I've got just the core paired to my device. And you can tell because in the app, it's going to just have the battery percentage up in the top right corner but you don't see any like little notifications saying, oh, not connected, it'll just have like a phone with the slash through it. Okay, so I press the big button a couple times to cycle back to the metronome. So, that's gonna control the app from here. Okay, and let's see. All right, so let's try that again just to make sure it's all working. This is gonna control the app. And it's in perfect sync. There might be some latency issues depending on how far you are away from the device. Um, if you've got a large ensemble room, you're going to have to make sure that there's a good window between every piece of equipment so that the Bluetooth uh, can connect to its to, to the um, source. Uh, I have had issues where kids are maybe too short and music stands block their view of the, um, the Bluetooth connection. But... For the most part, it's worked with uh, as low latency as possible, and it might take a week to get used to for the students and for yourself, because sometimes it will skip a beat to try to catch up, and uh, maybe we'll see that happen later on. But for the most part, when everything's close together like this or in a small room, um, it works really well. Okay, so that is the metronome on the core. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the, uh, how to pair all three of your devices, meaning 
the two watches and the app and then how that works in the classroom so I am on the iPad right now I'm looking at the player screen I'm gonna go to where it says settings in my settings it's gonna show me all right I've got my core connected I need to connect my NIMSA pulse that's what I named it you can name it to your devices so on my sound burner pulse I'm gonna turn the dial I'm gonna put two fingers on it you're gonna hear that vibrate and it is on and you could tell because it's illuminated around the side so now I'm gonna to go to the app I'm gonna just click on the device NIMSA pulse one you can see it's shining blue now it's connected now if I go back to my player and I click on this one the main one the core that's what I have set for my main it's going to activate all the devices at once so double tap quickly for the metronome to start oh you have to be in the metronome app there we go so you can see the LEDs on each one are different so you've got LEDs on um, your, your iPad and both of the two watches those are all customizable if you want to have a certain beat be blue uh, for the downbeat and then the third beat is uh, pink you can change all of that um, the kids really enjoyed it when we were just cycling through different stuff and different days that was a different color so it was really fun uh, just kind of experimenting with that you can also change the intensity of each vibration this having more surface area I think this connects better when you are uh, using this as a tool to keep time for students I would say definitely use the pulse the core is great for controlling and leading but it does not have as strong or at least as much surface area as the pulse and so it's harder for you to feel that uh, vibration as uh, you're rehearsing or conducting or playing an instrument where you're moving a lot so if you're wearing if you play percussion it's probably best to use something like this uh, so that you can put it on your arm your shoulder uh, and hide it under your sleeve so it can connect maybe with with uh, like your collarbone or your shoulder or something like that uh, when it's on your wrist it doesn't really feel as strong as it could so now we're going to just check out what I do in the classroom with this so if I was to give the kids uh, this watch without setting any permissions on it and letting everybody uh, letting it start and stop by itself they would probably throw off the flow of things so what I do is I go into the app and I change the permissions by clicking on the NIMSA pulse then I go into interaction lock and I lock it so you can see right there that red light went on let me just change that really quick sometimes it needs to okay so green I'm guessing is it's gonna control everything if you use two fingers there we go now if this is gonna be the student device right here I'm gonna turn the interaction lock on I'm gonna turn lock play and pause on so now the kids cannot change the tempo or start the metronome without me okay so now only this device the core is the only one that can move or start the tempo or you can start it from the iPad now if I really wanted to I could just lock the controls on uh, this one as well I believe um, you know what you actually can't on that device so this one you cannot lock this one you can this one's gonna be intended for students this one's a really premium uh, watch and not really meant for students to use in class so this will always be the one to lead with this one will be the one to follow so what I would do in class is I would give this as a reward for students who are um, following their expectations throughout the week this is something cool that they can wear at the end of the class or when we're learning a new piece and have fun with it and it's a tool that helps them internalize the beat I also have it for students who need this as a support in the classroom if we're making any accommodations for them uh, usually it's for our tactile learners who have a hard time internalizing a beat and have a hard time seeing an ictus when you're conducting they need to feel that so by having this when I'm conducting one two three four they can feel each time in the ictus because I'm also wearing the swatch they can feel where that movement is where I actually turn the pattern around so 
really helpful for our students. Uh, we had one this year who we bought this for who had a hearing aid who did not like to use their hearing aid in band because it was just way too loud and I don't blame him. So this was the solution that we had so he can feel each beat because um, that hearing difficulty um, put up some obstacles for when we would have our normal rehearsals. So that's how I use these devices in the classroom and these are really effective just on your own if you're practicing. If you just need a metronome, I did not go over the tuner, I did not go over the decibel meter in this video. This is just to give you an idea of what the metronome is like and how you run that in rehearsal. Um, what I would also do is I would start from the podium, start the metronome, and then as it was going, I count off a one, two, ready, go. Then we start our warm ups. I walk around the room. Anywhere in the room, I can press this to stop and start the metronome. So I don't even have to be on the podium to start and stop. I noticed that that's a big issue is you've always got to be near the device. This lets you go anywhere you want in the classroom and always be connected and your kids will always be able to feel the pulse. Um, you can also get a few of these. You can connect, I think, up to five and they sell these in bundles of like four sometimes. So this would be great if you gave it to multiple students, maybe students who are just having a hard time keeping the beat that day, needed a little bit of extra support, um, students who need that extra tactile um, support in class or use it as a reward for different sections so that one person is kind of rotating it every day that way everybody gets a, a chance to understand what the beat is supposed to feel like so that then when you're conducting kids are really responding to that ictus um, other than that that's that's how I use the metronome in class and I hope you come up with ways to use it as well if you end up using uh, the Soundbrenner Pulse or Core in your teaching